Good morning. morning. Thank you for joining us for our worship service today. Uh, My name is Pastor Jeremy DePina. If I've not had the opportunity of meeting you yet, thanks for being here with us today and uh, joining our Lord in this time of celebration and worship. Uh, Pastor Mark will be bringing us the sermon today. We're in that new series of looking at, uh, at the movies, so breaking down a different movie along with our text every week, so hopefully that's something that'll help you remember, tie the gospel lesson or the epistle lesson or the Old Testament lesson all to something that we can remember better and help us grow in our faith. Just a couple of quick announcements. Number one, for all the kids that are here with us today, uh, Kat just put together some new uh, bags for the church service to be able to uh, have some different activities for you to do uh, during the service, uh, to be able to not only just keep you entertained, but also to help you follow along with the service. Again, those are kid bags. Kid (laughs) bags. Everybody else, you guys do a great job of following along with the service. Uh, It's always orderly as usual. A great uh, opportunity for us to be able to, again, come together and be able to praise our Lord for all the wonderful things he has done. Tonight also is one of our summer fun nights we're doing. So tonight here in our worship center at 630 we're having a movie night. Uh, there will be food that is served also. Cat, yes? At 5. Oh, 5 o'clock. Not at 6.30. It's at 5 o'clock. I would have been super late. <laughs> at 5 o'clock. Thank you. At 5 o'clock tonight for our movie night. Sorry about that. I totally missed that. Uh, and the final announcement that I have is we are starting a brand new collection. Uh, One of the things that we partner with for uh, the Foothills uh, Food Bank is always putting together uh, backpacks for kids who are going to be getting uh, school. I know that seems like a little while off, but they start right in the beginning of August. So during the month of July, we will collect backpacks and all different school supplies. Uh, There is a list in the back, so all you have to do is pick up that list. You don't have to get everything on the list. If you would like to and pack a whole backpack, you are free to be able to do that. Simply bring that in as part of your offering throughout the month of July. We'll collect those together and then uh, give them to the food bank so they can be able to distribute those. So that's another part of our offering uh, that we have to take part in this month. Uh, All the announcements uh, there wrapped up. Make sure you check our website for anything else that's upcoming. But let's get back to our service this morning. The real reason why we are here Uh, to be able to honor and serve our Lord, the God who comes to give you his love and his forgiveness. Let's rise as we begin with our opening hymn. Stop. 
May that light shine in our service today as we make our beginning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Our Almighty God and his mercy is both received and responded to this confession of your sins. Is a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of our salvation, when your son set his face to go to Jerusalem and the cross, his zeal would not be deterred. Grant us to pray with the same fervor and boldness, trusting that you hear us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our first readings. Today's reading is from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. There he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous of the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. 
And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shephat, of Abel Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazel shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha, put to death. Yet I leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So... He departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again. For what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from the book of Galatians, chapter 5. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If 
we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for our gospel and all weavers. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along on the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. We come together this morning with Christians all over the world to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Just a brief welcome again to any guests that we have uh, here with us today or joining us online. Please, as always, let Pastor Mark and myself know if there's anything that we can do to be able to serve you or to be able to assist you in your uh, growth of faith. Uh, Just a reminder, we have those daily devotions that are coming out five days a week right now, so please uh, take part in that. During our time this morning, uh, you heard it in our reading today, that concept of fruits of the Spirit. We're going to have a a musical offering for you today that promotes that exact same thing. Remember that during this time of offering, God calls all of us to be able to give, to be able to share all that we have. Uh, That isn't just a financial element. It is also those fruits of the Spirit that are grown in us. And so today, uh, you and I are challenged to be able to see the talents that God has given to us, uh, those gifts that he has provided and use those to be able to serve him and his people.
Christy Megan, thank you so much. And please rise for the prayers of our church as we pray for the whole people of God. God of the church, you give pastors and church workers to proclaim your steadfast love and to announce freedom from the yoke of slavery to sin and point all toward the cross of Christ. Bless their faithful work that their labor in the Lord may never be in vain. Lord, in your mercy. And God of compassion, you establish the family to be a place of protection and growth. Grant that our homes would never become a stumbling block to the kingdom of God, but that they would serve to foster within us the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. And God of all power and might, to you belong the kingdom and the glory forever. Give insight and wisdom to our president, our governor, our legislative branches, and all leaders. Direct and give them the ability to be able to punish evildoers and to be able to reward the righteous and strive always for peace. Lord, in your mercy. And God of refuge, your salvation draws near to all who trust in you. Grant peace to your people and show us salvation. Hear our petitions for healing, strength, and comfort, especially for Dean, Artie, Kim, Quentin, Pat, and Paul. Be near them as the refuge of the weary and the God who preserves his people. Lord, in your mercy. And God of holiness, you graft into our hearts the love of your name. As you create new hearts within us, bless us with the fruit of the Spirit that our love for you might be expressed for our neighbor's good. Lord, in your mercy. And God of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant that the whole church might fix her eyes on him. Teach us the way of the cross, remove hindrances and distractions. Do not let the freedom that we have in the gospel become an excuse for sin and an advice, but an opportunity for love and for service. Lord, in your mercy. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Lord, please remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey everybody. Aloha. It's good to see you. So we've started uh, this new series that we like to do in the summers uh, called At the Movies. One reason, I just like movies. Well, good movies, of course. I uh, just enjoy being uh, a good story. I just love watching a good story. And what I think is really interesting as we do these, uh, these series here, we, we look at these movies, is uh, it's a great picture of, of our culture and their perspective of the world. And they recognize uh, the same troubles, the same hardships, the same uh, things that we would call sin. Uh, maybe they don't, but uh, they, they recognize all these things, but because they don't have this, uh, or at least they don't tell the stories uh, in, in this uh, worldview of, of a God who sends Jesus to save us from our sins and restore us to, to glory and to a, a perfect relationship with our creator, uh, they're just, they never quite come to the happily ever after, right? They, they never quite can take the story in a full circle. Well, uh, last week, I think Pastor Jeremy doing a great job uh, talking about Father Stu. Tough movie to watch. Uh, I know many people mentioned they cried uh, when they watched that. And uh, he focused on God's law and the uses of God's law, the curb, kind of curb society, going off the rails. God's law used as a mirror to show our sinfulness so that we know that we need Jesus, we need to confess. And then God's law uh, used as a guide to help us who are thankful uh, for Jesus and want to live our lives for Jesus. Well, what do we do? Well, we can look at God's law. Uh, but if you want the whole enchilada, uh, go back to our YouTube channel if you didn't get to see uh, Pastor Jeremy's message and check that out. God's law. Today, I want to shift our focus to the gospel, and specifically, the freedom of the gospel. It's very exciting to think about being free, freed in God's gospel, freed in his love. But here's the thing. With a great freedom comes great responsibility, right? Yes, this means yes, this means no. Yes, a great responsibility for us. And I want to use the movie Dog. Now, you don't have to have seen this movie to follow along. You can watch it later. I would say that all of the movies uh, that we're going to look at, we do uh, like, uh, we do enjoy the story. And I'm not uh, saying they're all child-friendly. I'm not saying, again, the worldview is perfect. Um, but I am saying they're... Uh, good entertaining stories, and uh, they have a lot that we can learn from uh, God's Word and especially the, the, the comparison or the contrast, right, between the, the way the world uh, sees life and, and the way we see, see our life. Okay, so Dog. Dog's a great movie. It's a story about a former Army Ranger, uh, Jackson Briggs. He's played by Channing Tatum there. And uh, he was uh, injured in battle. He has suffered a brain injury. He was kind of put out of commission. But he's so desperate to get back in the action that he accepts a very unwelcoming task of driving this former army, this military dog, who's also suffered combat uh, injuries, uh, driving this dog to its handler's funeral. His handler from the war had passed away, and uh, his job, if he can get the dog there to the funeral on time, then his commander is going to let him get back uh, in the game. He'll sign off on uh, that he's fit for service again. So I'll give you just a little tiny clip from the preview just to tell a little bit of the, the story of the movie. I've been busting to get my mind and my body back into a good place. I need to get back in the game, sir. You want to get back in the game? Prove it. Sergeant Rodriguez was a legend. Family funeral Sunday outside of Nogales. They want his dog at the funeral. You do this, and you're back in the game. 
She won't work with anyone. One minute she's good, the next minute she's sending three guys to the ER. What's up, dog? And you're gonna go on a little road trip. Easy. What are y'all so scared of? Come on out, bitch. Ah! Is your deal, man. Maybe just take the crazy down one notch. All right. All right. So, so uh, there's some obviously some comical scenes of their misadventures along the road. Some of some of these uh, mishaps are, are comical. Some are very touching. We'll say the movie does a very good job of taking a very serious look at the injuries to the mind of humans and of dogs uh, through combat, through traumatic, any really traumatic uh, situation. So uh, you can see the, the dog's name is Lulu, by the way. If I, if I say Lulu, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, Lulu, of course, is also scarred uh, from battle and is, is uh, having a very difficult time uh, dealing with the post-traumatic stress. Of, of her combat experiences too. And so she, she, she lashes out a lot. She's bitten people. She sent uh, little clips that's like five people to the ER um, trying to just feed her, <laughs> to pet her. Um, and so the verse, the one verse that we've read today, uh, that Anne read in the epistle reading, I really want us to focus on today is uh, verse 15 in Galatians 5. And Paul's writing to Christians in Galatia, the church in Galatia. He's writing to, to everyone who follows Jesus. And he says, if you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Watch out. Pastor, does this seem like an odd warning to give to Christians? I mean, we're, we're Christians. What do you mean? Watch out. Don't bite. Don't devour each other. Well, yeah, we are Christians, but you know what? We are, we are also subject to stress, anxiety, fear. That's a big one. Shame. Shame from the past, anxiety about the future, fear that someone might learn that secret that nobody else knows about you. And we are just as, uh, yes, we're Christians, but we are also human. And humans have an impulsive reaction to these very strong emotions. Anxiety, stress, uh, rage, anger, depression, shame. And so there's something that I, uh, I talk about a lot, uh, certainly within uh, ministry teams, ministry leaders. And it's a very simple concept, very, very easy to remember. Hurt people hurt people. People who are hurt, people who are in pain, lash out and hurt other people. And I think that's probably why nurses, nurses are the number one respected profession in America. Everybody has tremendous respect for nurses. Because they are dealing with people at their lowest point, usually. They're fearful, or they're in pain, physical, literally pain. And those people tend to lash out. Nurses have a, an incredible compassion uh, to care for these people, to take that, those hits, those bites, and uh, continue to, to love and care for the patients. Hurt people, hurt people. Now, in the movie, uh, Lulu, the dog, is the kind of the one that reacts, that uh, is lashing out. She's biting people. And this next scene, it's a super short clip, but uh, Jackson, the Army Ranger, he's, he's left Lulu alone in his truck, and 
she is going to communicate how mad and how angry she is the only way she knows how. Hey, no, 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 you're just a demon. You're just a demon. Right? She's destroying his truck. And what's she doing? She's communicating the only way she knows how. She is scared. She is hurting. She's alone. She doesn't know why he's left, where he's gone, when he'll be back. And she's hurt. And so she's hurting someone else. But did you notice how Jackson replied? Did you hear what he said? He said, you're just a demon. A demon. He's hurt. Now, she's hurt her, him, he's going to lash back out at her. Now, would we, Christians, right, Christians, would we fall into such a cycle? Would we fall into such a trap of, of, of someone hurting us, we're going to hurt them, they're going to hurt us back? Is that something that we could slip into? We bite we devour each other. That was just one example. It's obviously a recent, a relevant example. Now, to be clear, uh, I, I stand very firmly on one side, on, on biblical truths. But do you realize that even people who see things another way, even people on the opposite extreme, you know that Jesus died for them? You know, even if they don't believe in Jesus, that Jesus died for them. Now, this issue, there's hundreds of issues we could bring up. I'm not even going to get into this specifically today, but Hundreds of things that I see pulling our society apart. And if you get down to the root of it, what is it? Hurt people hurt people. Now, on this or any other topic, do, are, are we active? Uh, do we voice our concerns? Do we vote our conscience? Yes, 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 a thousand yeses. It's not what I'm talking about today. I, I am addressing the issue of our society tearing itself apart. Hurting people, hurting people. And the cycle continues and continues and continues. We talked about the fruits of the Spirit. That's later on in uh, Galatians 5. Uh, Paul also listed a couple of those fruits of the Spirit. But first, before he talks about these fruits, he says, you know what? This is what's not a fruit. Fear. You know, political parties pray I'm not talking about folding your hands. P-R-E-Y. Pray on our fears. For raising money, for getting people to protest or vote. There's very few emotions that are more motivating than a human fear, a primal emotion. But fear is not a fruit of the Spirit. Fear is not from God. And if it's not from God, where do you think it's from? Second Timothy, Paul's writing here. God gave us a spirit not of fear that does not come from God. We trust in God no matter what is happening around us no matter what is happening to us 
We know God holds us in the palm of his hand more than us. He's got the whole world in his hands. Fear is not from God. That is from another spirit. But God has given us a spirit of power. And it's the same power that created the universe out of nothing and raises the dead. On Pentecost, we celebrated that spirit coming and dwelling within us now and forever. We have that power within us. Of whom shall we be afraid? God's given us a spirit of love. A a, a Jesus kind of love. A selfless kind of love. A love that cares more about the other person than even ourselves. A love that seeks to understand the other person more than it seeks to win a debate, to make a point. Hurt people hurt people, and if they are hurting, something's got to break the cycle. It's not hurting back, right? It's stopping and saying, what are you so afraid of? What, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think that I want to happen? That's so awful or so evil in your mind? What is your perspective? Listen, invite, seek to understand more than making a point. And there's another fruit of the Spirit there, the Spirit of self-control. Hmm. A disciple, you know the root word there, discipline? Discipline. We are disciplined people. We control our fleshly desires. We don't let our desires control us, our actions. The Spirit of God, the love of God, compels us to speak, compels us to act in ways aligning with with his love. Self-control. Now, going back to Galatians 5, just before this, uh, don't bite, don't devour He says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. There it is, that freedom of the gospel. Think about the freedom that we have. We are completely free because of Jesus' blood shed for us on the cross that forgives every sin. We are free from guilt. We are free from shame. We are free from the, the... desire for revenge, to lash back out, those fleshly desires, right? Don't use that freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, look at this, serve one another. How? Humbly, humbly in love. Again, that love that seeks to serve, that seeks to bless For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. One command. Now, forget about the 472 rules of the Pharisees. You know what? You don't even have to remember 10 commandments. Although I hope you did memorize them in confirmation, right? No, don't even worry about that. Tell you what, here's one... One commandment. And Jesus told us this. Moses said this in Leviticus. Love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law is fulfilled. And if you just keep this one rule, one law, one command, love your neighbor as yourself. I know a pastor that has a, a, a kind of a Rule of thumb is a great way to remember this. If you're not sure if something you did was wrong, is that something I need to ask forgiveness for? Just ask yourself, what would love require? The words that I said, the thing that I did, was that loving? 
If you're thinking about how to react, how to respond, how to speak, what to do, simple question. What does love require? What does love require of me? What is the loving thing to do? It really breaks it down, doesn't it? it? Sure does make it simple. All right, last short clip uh, from our movie. Uh, Jackson is on his road trip with Lulu, and he finds out that Lulu's brother, another military service dog, Belgian Melanois, uh, is San Diego on the way, and so he's going to stop by and, and, and let her see her brother. And as he's talking to her, uh, his handler, Nuke, Nuke's the dog's name, uh, what Jackson learns is that it took them a very long time to break that cycle of hurting each other. It took a very long time to heal. Lulu, is that you? Good girl. Do you give hugs now? Really? Lulu gives the best hug. You've never had a Lulu hug? No, we don't, we don't, we don't exactly hug. Exactly hug. Can you tell me that Nick was just as messed up as Lulu? I had to work him every day for six months. When he stopped struggling, that's when I realized maybe I could stop struggling too. Hmm. Yeah, when he, uh, when he realized that uh, he'd stop struggling, I realized I could stop struggling too. It was a process of both of them uh, healing from all of this stress and anxiety, shame comes from... Uh, being in battle, things you have to do, all these emotions that we all uh, are, are thrown at us by our enemy, not realizing that we are free. We, have, we are completely free of those spirits that are not from God. And we are free to live in the spirits that God has given us, the fruits of the spirit. Now, for the cycle to be broken, to be stopped, somebody has to be the first to let their guard down. Now with a, with a human and a dog, those two combat veterans, clearly the human, right? It's gonna have to be the mature, the responsible one to first let his guard, her guard down uh, and be vulnerable to being hurt so that the other person can see, oh, this person is not my enemy. This person does not want to harm me. This person loves me. Well, when it comes to human, to human interaction, Guess who has to be the first to let their guard down? Well, let's put it this way. Guess whose responsibility it is to first let down their guard and be vulnerable? It's me. And it's you, Christian. This is our gift to the sin-sick world to mirror to Jesus, to show his selfless love, to open ourselves up, yes, might be hurt. But we don't react. We don't lash out with our fleshly desires. And how in the world can we get to a place where we live like that? Well, it's when we know, listen, more than we know, it's when we trust with all our heart in what Jesus has done for us. Whatever you are embarrassed by, whatever you are ashamed of, whatever secret that you have that you hope nobody else ever finds out, guess what? Jesus knows it. He already knows it. Guess what? He knew it before you did it. He knew it when he was on the cross. 
That's why he went to the cross. To take it away. To take all of it away. To take all of them, everything you've done, away. To forgive you. It is gone. It is not who you are anymore. You're a child of God. And I'll just... I know you said something last week. You're not going to give any spoiler alerts. I have to give you this one tidbit. If you haven't seen the movie, because I know my wife, she will not watch a dog movie until she knows in advance whether the dog dies at the end. (laughs) Right? And I'm with her. Why do you want to invest two hours, right? Of your life to be completely sobbing at the end of this. That's terrible. So, spoiler alert the dog does not die at the end. All right. It's a good movie to watch. As a matter of fact, by the end of the movie, Jackson adopts Lulu. Now, did you catch that in Ephesians 5 13, what Paul said to you? He called you a brother or sister. Called you a brother or sister. Why would he say that? Because that's the reality. It's true. We have all been adopted by God in our baptisms. We are all God's children, and so we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, how did Jackson feel when Lulu? destroyed his truck. How do you think God should feel when we harm his earth? We put poison into the water that gives people cancer. We destroy it. We litter. We pollute. How should God feel about that? How did Jackson feel when Lulu barked at, attacked, even bit other people. How should God feel when we gossip about, speak ill, treat poorly, disrespect other children of his? How did Jackson feel when Lulu bit him, (laughs) attacked him personally? How should God feel when we lash out, attack, and really bite the hand that feeds us? It's pretty amazing. God God tells us how he feels. Jesus tells us exactly how God feels in that moment that he is bitten by nails through his hands and his feet, and they are slandering him and mocking him and lashing out at Jesus On the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. Hurt people hurt people. They just, they're lashing out. They're afraid. They're ashamed. They have anxiety. They're just lashing out. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Now it's our turn to be the body of Christ, to be Jesus, share his love with our brothers and sisters. Forgive them. They really, they don't know what they're doing. God help us to do this. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand for our benediction, our closing hymn. Good to see all of you here and online again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.